heart. Sing it with me. Oh, and there to my heart was the blood of God. Oh, glory to His name. And what can wash away verse 6. Thank you, praise team, this music team for leading us today. Aren't they great? We're so blessed and so thankful. Praise God. I do want to say as you're turning to the text today is that this coming Friday I'm asking all of you to be here and be at the service. It's going to be a great, great night. We have uh, um, two speakers. Ken Stewart, who is the promotions director for the North American Missions Division of the United Pentecostal Church. You're going to love him. He's fun. He's funny. He's a great guy. Jonathan Sanders is going to come with a prophetic word. It's going to be very powerful about what God is doing in the, king, doing in the kingdom. Look at your neighbor and say, the thing that we're a part of is bigger than the role we play. We're just part of it. But I want to do my part. Individually here, collaboratively here, to see God do a great work around the world. Mission service, uh, and that is going to be this coming um, this coming Friday at 7. Again, I'm asking all of you to come. Please don't stay home. Come be a part of that and s support what God is doing in Ohio in North American Missions. I am the North American Missions Director of Ohio, and uh, God's been doing great things. We, we've been uh, planning more churches as a district. It's really something what's happened. There's been a breakthrough in Ohio. We're planting churches all over Ohio. We're so thankful. There is it's been amazing. More daughter works and it's been it's just absolutely amazing. And so we want the gospel of Jesus Christ to go to everybody. Don't we? Amen. And um, Saturday morning at at ten AM there's gonna be a teaching session. I'm gonna talk about multi campus and also Ken Stewart will be talking about um, some of the benefits for missionaries at eleven o'clock. But Jonathan Sanders will be with us again. You do not want to miss that. And so thank you. Thank you for being here. Following that Sunday, the following um, on November the 6th on Sunday night, this is going to be uh, our missions, biggest mission service of the year. It's probably our biggest Sunday of the year where we give to missions. 
because what we're a part of is bigger. Because of your giving, we're able to send Brother Neelik and Brother Noe Berrientos uh, to Southeast Asia because our missionaries there are in the country right now deputizing. And while they were there, they were able to stop in the Philippines, and Brother Noe baptized his sister that he's been praying for and her family. Amazing. God gave him a burden for his family there 13 years ago, began to pray. And 12 years ago, five minutes from their house, a man started the church there. And the Lord showed that man that two, two foreigners were going to come. And was going to break open revival in his church. <laughs> Amen. And Brother Melik and Brother Noe came. It's not the first time that's happened. But Brother Melik and Brother Noe came and baptized how many five of the family members and more there's a bible study now going on in that home in the philippines you're a part of something bigger than zanesville amen it's exciting one time just remain standing one time they were in in the baileys and met a man at a sushi shop i believe it was and they began to witness to him and he said i need you to come and see my grandmother when they got to her house she was astounded because she said, you're the two men the Lord showed me the vision that will come and show me the way of the Lord. Isn't that amazing? Just to think that we could be used of the Lord to do a great work. Come on, I'm talking to this church. You are mightily used of God. And as I said in the first word, that you might not be able to be the missionary called, but you can give so they can go. And I, I think before we read this verse, we ought to lift our hands and thank Him for being able to be a part of such a great kingdom, the kingdom of God. Lord, we love you today. We're so very thankful. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalm 68, verse 6, also uh, will reference Romans 11, John 15. But it says, God setteth the solitary in families. Everybody say, solitary. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. God setteth the solitary. It is the only place in Scripture where the word solitary is used as a noun. Everywhere else it's used as an adjective, a solitary place. But this means a person. It's referencing a person. In every family, God establishes a person to reach their family. Every family needs somebody praying for them and reaching them. How many want to be a solitary for your family? That God can speak through, you can pray through. Amen. Again, I will preach what I preached a couple weeks ago, talking about reaching my part of the world. I want to make a difference in my part of the world. If you want your life to count for something, if you do, say amen. You can be seated. It was an early morning. It was before daybreak that my grandmother, Mabel Bounds, was awakened by the Lord. She was awakened out of her sleep. Her husband, Homer, my grandfather, my dad's dad, was it working in the deep mines. If you know anything about a deep mines, you, you can't see your hand in front of your face. You can picture it. They've got the coal miner's hat on with a, a bright lamp here so they can see. He's working somewhere down, down in the mountain. My dad was a coal miner, deep mines. He would work a mile or two miles under a mountain. Could you imagine that? Sometimes a coal seam would just be as about as tall as, as this podium here and a mile or two under a mountain. That does not sound like fun to me. And um, sometimes you have a six-foot a six seam of coal, uh, four foot, sometimes just under 30 inches. But they're on these machines digging out coal out of the mountains, and my grandfather was under that mountain. And uh, there was an urgency that came upon Mabel Bounds and she got on her knees and began to pray, Oh God, I don't know what's wrong, but would you touch Homer? Would you touch my husband right now, God? I can't see where he's at, but I feel, Lord, an urgency to pray. I'm asking you to touch my husband. Her husband wasn't saved. Homer didn't live for God, but 
he belonged to her. That was her husband. Said just a few hours later, a few hours later, the the uh, door opened and her husband Homer came for the door much earlier than he should on a given work day. And she says to him, she says to him, she says, "Why are you home early?" And I can see the terror on your face. What's wrong? He said, "You're not going to believe what happened today." He said, "I was down in the mines." He said, "A voice spoke to me to look up." He said, when I looked up, I could see the mountaintop start dripping. What that means is the mountain that's cracked. It's getting ready to fall in. And he said, I screamed, run! He said, when I said that every one of us ran the right direction except one man, he ran the wrong way and he was crushed by the mountain. God had used a wife to pray protection over her husband. And the Lord heard and spoke to an unsaved family member to look up. Why didn't God go to Homer? Because he went to his body. He went to the believer. He went to the solitary in the family. I want to say to you that it's, it, there's more to this than just us going to heaven. We are responsible for someone else going to heaven. An angel can't save you. As a matter of fact, an angel can't even give you the truth. The Bible tells us that the angel in Acts 10 went to a man by the name of Cornelius and said, I want you to go send for Simon Peter. He's going to tell you how to be saved. And God visited Simon Peter in a vision and said, men are about to knock on your door. Go with them, and I want you to go with them and tell them how to be saved. God uses people to reach people. I want to say to everybody in this building that it is your responsibility to reach those that belong to you. Your family, your spouse, maybe your parents, maybe your children, even grandkids and some of you great. And I met somebody I think maybe even had a great great. But you have to understand that there are people that are depending on you for God. We need to have an access line to the throne of heaven. So when those that are dependent upon us need God, God can speak through us, amen, and hear us for their sake. You are the solitary in a family. If you believe that, say amen. I want you to hear me today that God hears you when you pray. It is your responsibility to carry a burden, not only a burden, but a call of God to reach those that are in your life. My dad many years ago was working a job and he was working at a coal mine, what do they call a coal tipple, and um, and it's, it's where they process the coal and then put it on the barge that's in the river. He was working there. And, and one day, somebody walked up to my dad and said, there's a man by the name of Greg on the job that's going through a lot. And said, uh, it'd be great if you could talk to him. My dad went that night and told the Lord, he said, you know who Greg is. And said, he's going through a situation. I'm asking you, God, to make a way for me to be with him so I can minister to him. And um, the next day, Dad shows up on the job, and the boss comes to him and says, Frank, we don't need you on this part of the job. We need you to work on the other part of the job. And guess who he was teamed up with? Teamed up with Greg. He's teamed up with a guy he prayed for. When he saw Greg begin to talk to him, Greg said, I prayed last night that God would let you work with me. You're not on the job just to make money. The job that you have is of the Lord. Amen. To bless your basket and your store. Deuteronomy 28. But there's more to it than just making a living. God's called you to make a difference. See, I, I, I'm not talking to community members here right now. I'm talking to the body of Christ. That there are people desperate in your world. That God has put you on that job, not just to pay your bills and send you on vacation and have a good retirement. Yes, it's part of it. But God knows how to order your steps. And the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You are the body. You are the sons and the daughters of God that he can use to bring life to them. He makes this statement in John chapter 15. I'd like you to turn there if you will. Because you say, preacher, I'm shy, I'm quiet. How can I make a difference? How can I make a difference in my family? How can I make a difference, Lord, with those that are around me? Jesus teaches us in John 15. He said, I am the true vine. John 15 and 1. And my father is the husbandman. 
Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Amen. If you look at Romans chapter 11, Romans chapter 11, let's turn there for a moment. You're saying, how can I make an impact? I, I'm not a preacher too shy to teach. I'm going to tell you how you can make an impact. He goes, goes in chapter 11, verse 15. He says, or 16, for if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And when you begin to realize that Jesus is the root and the offspring of David, he is the root of love. He's the root of joy. He is our source. You are not the root. You are the branch of the vine. Out of the root comes a vine. Jesus is that vine. Amen. And from the vine comes the branch. He teaches us in Romans 11 that it is the branch that produces the fruit. Um, would you go get the fruit basket for me? Bring up the fruit basket. I just got instantly hungry. I don't know how that happened. It was in a moment, the twinkling of an eye that happened to me. A fruit of the Spirit begins to happen. Sit that right there. Don't eat it. Eat any of it right now. You can have one grape. Go ahead, just one. You want one grape? You don't want one grape? When you have the fruit, Carol, when you have the fruit of the Spirit, when you have the fruit of the Spirit, it's what the world gleans from. Brother Chuck, would you come? Brother Chuck is a, is a great Christian man. He's a blessing to this congregation. He's an elder. So thankful for him. I need you to come help me. When you begin to look, what happens is, is when you are connected, when you are connected to the root of God. Oh, let's move this pulpit out of the way. Ms. Sawyer and Noah, if y'all could come and help and, and just pull the pulpit out of the way for a minute. But let's matter of fact, just pull the pulpit over here. Just, just bring it over here. Set, set it aside. Yeah, just right there is good. Um, I want you to set the fruit right there at, at the altar. Set it right there. The preacher should always bear fruit. If the root is holy, then I should be holy. But sometimes we put stuff on the preacher we don't put on ourselves. It's not just the preacher that should be holy. Every believer should be holy. They should be producing, everybody say, fruit. Amen. When you begin to look as a, a man like this that come and stand right here, that, that is in the community and does different business and has worked, and he's retired now, but it doesn't mean he's not involved. When you get connected to Jesus through a relationship, all of a sudden, you're no longer, no longer just a community citizen. You're no longer just a member of the Bell family. That now you are connected to the root of Jesus Christ, the vine. That there is a flow from the root system to the vine into your spirit. And what happens, you become almost like a tree. And you began to bear fruit. Help him right now. You begin to bear fruit from your spirit. Amen. You begin to bear, bear fruit. Amen. And what happens is, my land is, he's loading you up. Praise God. Give him an orange and an apple. And you begin to see from the word of the Lord, if they would put on the screen Galatians chapter 5. Galatians Galatians chapter 5. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit. What is the fruit of the Spirit? What does it say? It's a love. It's joy. 
its peace is long suffering. That means enduring people. It means enduring your spouse, enduring your children, enduring your boss, enduring your preacher. I don't know. Enduring people in your world. It means you have long suffering. It doesn't mean to suffer as in a as a sense of pain. It means a long suffering, waiting for them to be better. Because love is patient, it's kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. Amen. It, it seeks no record of wrong. It doesn't want it, somebody to fail. When the fruit of the Spirit comes, you'll wait on people to get better. You'll wait on the spouse to get better. You'll believe for that child to come through this season in their life. Come on, the world will cast them aside, but long-suffering will say, hey, I think there's more to it than just the right now moment. You bear long suffering. You you bear gentleness and you bear gentleness and kindness. And uh, can you can you hold that please? Just you you not long, just long, but you become gentle. Gentle. What else comes from you? Goodness, faith. Oh. Hopeless people get around you and all of a sudden they're believing it. You know, I just think I, I just think I'm gonna be all right. They're unbelievers. But when they get around you, since you don't want any, I'm gonna pluck some. Amen. I'll revisit that vine. Mmm. Mmm. I was empty until I got around that saint of God. I was troubled until they came onto the job. I was hopeless. They never preached to me. But in the atmosphere on the job, somehow changed when they walked in the room. I felt peace. Couldn't wait to get to work. Matter of fact, I try to come early just to sit near them because I find something in them I don't get at home. What is that about you that's different? Never invited me to church. Never preached me a sermon. But there's something different about you. What is it? It's the fruit. I've seen people that could prophesy that didn't have fruit. I've seen people that had spiritual giftings but not have fruit. There's a difference between spiritual gifts and spiritual fruit. Come on now. Saul could prophesy when he was going to witches. Attitude is everything in Christianity. God didn't call you. When it says if you don't bear fruit, he's going to cut you out and throw you in the fire, it's not talking about success. It's not talking about how many Bible studies you taught. It's not talking about how many churches you plant, what meetings you preach, how many souls that you've won. That's not what it's talking about, bearing fruit. Simply bearing fruit means to bear fruit. That means that you've got love seeping out of your spirit. You've got peace coming from your veins. You've got love. Come on. You've got long suffering coming from you. You've got temperance. You've got, oh, you're able to control your attitude and your temper. What is it? It's God flowing through me as a light to a dark world. It's love. Can I tell you today, I'm thankful for our great praise team. I'm thankful for the talented people we have. People have spiritual giftings used in the gifts of the Spirit. But don't ever let us replace the gifts of the Spirit and think we're okay and not bear the fruit of the Spirit. We ought to have a good attitude. We ought to have tempered, able to control our spirit. We ought to be able to treat waiters and waitresses right when they don't put our food in in time. Come on, it's temperance. Kindness. Gentleness. It's the fruit of the Spirit that causes me to reach my world. I'll never forget standing. Is the fruit getting heavy? You okay? I'll help you. I'm visiting that tree again. It's good. It refreshes me. What is it about you that I like being around? God. Woo. 
something about that guy. He doesn't just love me, but I feel peace. Oh, yeah. I was giving up on my marriage till I got around here. If Eve can eat fruit and her eyes were open. Chuck, I, I just got a question for you. Uh, why is it when I'm around you, I feel like I can conquer the world? But when I was home, I wanted to take my life because I didn't feel valued enough to live. They didn't stay after work for overtime. They stayed after work to sit at your feet. You didn't preach them a sermon. You might have talked something about the goodness of God. I was at Bob Evans and I'm preaching with food in my mouth. Sorry, Lakin. Hear me right now. The goodness of the Lord. How do I reach my part of the world? Long suffering, joy. Well, if I was around somebody all the time, they had a bad attitude and life was miserable, I don't think I'd hang out with them. I mean, if they're always miserable, always talking about the news and how the world's going to fall apart, I mean, if the world's going to fall apart, doomsday, the churches are falling, no young people want to live with God, there's no preachers that are holy or righteous or positive or don't have any care. If I was around that all the time, I, 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 I wouldn't want to live probably. i change circles, shadows. But when you give me somebody that's uplifting, not listen to the report of the world, but they've been connected to a vine. Joy unspeakable. You get around them and you just feel better. What is that I feel? What is that that's going on? It's fruit upon a believer. To where, hey, listen, I was at Bob Evans one time. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. I, I was there. I'm talking about the lady, the lady waiting tables looked past due to have that baby. She did. She went up to some table. Honey, you might have been with me at that moment. She went, I don't know what happened, but she must have not brought something in time, on time, cooked right. You know, some people are always looking for something wrong. And uh, uh, you're not hungry enough, you're always looking for something wrong, by the way. And uh, she laid that on there, and that man ringed her like I've never seen anybody ringed in a restaurant. He stormed out. I don't even know if he paid his bill. He didn't act like no Christian. If he was, his back slid. He walked out. He ringed that young lady and uh, went on his way. And I watched that girl as they tried to comfort her. She was just shaking, crying. She had to check out. She was so emotionally disturbed because somebody didn't get their way. And I thought to myself, don't, God, I don't want that to ever be me. If my potatoes are cold and my steak's not right, it's okay to send it back. But if they get it wrong three times in a row, it's okay. But I don't need to ring somebody because look what, look what the fruit of the Spirit is. Come on, throw it back up there. It's love, joy. You know what they're waiting on? That's what they're waiting on. Some people are so nervous in today. They're so nervous to wait tables. Doesn't mean you can't ask for it. Doesn't mean you can't ask for what. But you know what? When they're there and they're expecting, they know the food. Was right. They know that, and you you just hold out grace. It's gonna be okay. I've had a bad day too. Don't you worry about that. Hallelujah. And she plucks fruit from your vine when you walk in. And you didn't degrade her. You didn't cut her tip down. You hand her a note that gave her a written tip instead of a pay tip. She didn't deserve it. They didn't deserve it. Hear me out. Sometimes you can be dead right and cause you to be absolutely wrong. Because grace is unmerited favor. It's when I didn't deserve it, but he gave it to me anyhow. That's what he's done for me. And if he can give me grace, I can give my brother grace. I can give. Hallelujah. 
Can I say to every mother, every father, give room in your house for grace for your children. Let there be fruit of the Spirit. Can I say to everybody in this building, every pastor on staff, every Sunday school teacher on staff, everybody here, listen, it's not always going to be perfect, but let them reach up and get fruit from your branch that says it's going to be okay. I've had a bad day too, but God was good to me. Come on, we're here because of the love of God and the grace of God. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Temperance. Oh, should be mad but kind. Should be losing your mind but you're kind. Treated wrong but you come across with this graceful, kind attitude and you bless somebody with fruit that does not come from human nature. It doesn't come from personality. It's not driven. It's not driven from culture. It's driven because before you ever started your day, you linked down below the soil that nobody could see and got a hold of a root system that is linked, amen, to heaven. That does causes you to do. He says in, in Galatians, he said the spirit and the flesh, they're contrary one to the other. He said you need the leading of the flesh, spirit, because the flesh will cause you to do things that are wrong. But his spirit will cause you to oppose what the flesh will would normally do. Listen, when you were before Christ, you'd lose your mind, punch a hole in the wall, kick the neighbor. It didn't matter. You were mad and angry and you were just acting out in your flesh. But all of a sudden, because you were linked to the roots of Jesus Christ, connected to his vine, listen, that you didn't join. He joined you. He cut you out of the wild olive tree in Romans 11. He grafted you in to the true vine. And you should be acting like your daddy acted. You should be acting like your mama acted. But all of a sudden, it sweeps over your soul. Why am I not mad now? Why am I not angry? I'm going to tell you why. It's the true vine. It's the love of God. It's the mercy of the Lord. Is there anybody in this building that wants to produce the fruit of the Spirit? That's how you're going to reach your part of the world is the fruit. It's the fruit. Don't knock it till you try it. Come on. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. You know what we need? A church that embraces the grace and mercy of God. Not just for me, for everybody that does me wrong. Not just for me, but when things don't go my way, I act in a manner the way Christ would act, not how I used to act. I'm telling you, mean men can can become gentle giants because gentleness is a fruit. It doesn't mean you're weak because you're meek. It means they're seeing another source. That they may see... That they may see our good works and glorify. Glorify the Father. Be seated a moment. Somebody shout, hey man. How many feel what I'm preaching here today? Brother Chuck, is the fruit getting heavy? You all right? Come on, Noah. Get, come and get some of the fruit. Come on. Run up there. Run up. Oh, ben, go on. Go on. He, he, he wasn't even invited, but he's hungry. Amen. Get a, get a fruit. No, from him. Fuck it from him. Get something from him. Yeah. Oh, man. Praise the name. Listen, he's so hungry, he, he's hiding behind his back. Amen. He, it's just the fruit of the Spirit. People ought to want to be around you. What's that I feel? Is that, oh, it's not this hillbilly from West Virginia. Oh, no. It's. Fruit of the Spirit. Run up here, Emily. Come on, Emily. Run up. Oh, my. Come on up here. Run. Don't fall on the high heels. The Bible says there was a woman by the name of Ruth. And her mother-in-law, who is mother to her dead husband, 
I said, where in the world did you get all that fruit? Where would you get all that good stuff up? She would come down. I mean, it is heaped up. Don't get that apple. I've got a bite out of it. Amen. I'm going to finish it too. She goes down. She's been gathering because Boaz told all the servants, all the reapers, you know what you are? You're the reapers. You get to reap from the benefits of the king. You get to reap blessing. You get to reap joy. You serve God long enough, I promise you, you'll reap it in your finances. You'll reap it in the health of your family. It will, I promise you. It'll reap. You just got to listen. But you got to stay in the field of the king. He, he, told, he told Ruth, he said, what do you do? Don't go to any other field. You can't find in any other field what you find in the field of Boaz. I tell some new convert here that you, you're looking another way. Don't you go to another field. Everything you need is in the house of God. Everything you need is in the Lord. Come on, I feel like preaching. The devil's trying to get you to go somewhere else. But God said, I've got everything you need here. And there's enough for you and your family and your children. Hallelujah. Brother Chuck, I'm just trying to be a blessing to you. Where did you get all those goods? She said, in the field of Boaz. She said, I've been around here long enough. Don't go anywhere else because the king's got his eye on you. Don't go anywhere else because the king, nobody gets that much stuff in because the king loves them. How many feel that way? My dad's favorite song. Is that song they sing? The goodness of God. He's good to me. He's good to you. And it looked like you were dying. Girl said, I'm not. Two days before your funeral, not funeral, my lady, surgery. It could have been a funeral. I walked in there with a fruit of the spirit in my hand. Here, Brother Chuck, bring me those grapes. You're going to help me eat one, amen. Hope you're not fasting because it's getting ready to break, praise God. I'm just a friend of your family, pastor to your wife, and you reached up at a tough situation. And the Lord began to move in that room. I'll never forget as long as I live. And I said, the Lord said it's going to be okay because yesterday, two days ago, he gave me a word for you. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move. He said, I feel it right now. You know what he was doing? Fruit of the Spirit. He wants some logical explanation. Just the fruit of the Spirit. It was the goodness of God. You come through the surgeon, they didn't look like you were making, you had gray matter all over your head because of all the strokes you had and didn't look like they said this is probably what he's going to be the rest of his life but prayer was made and he's perfectly whole went back to work last Monday that's the goodness of God you deserve it you deserve it you deserve it come on he deserves every praise because when I wasn't where I should be he Anyhow, stand to your feet as I close. It's the fruit of the Spirit. When Jesus walks in the room, everything changes. His presence bears the fruit. Amen. And guess what? Now your presence embodies the fruit. Whatever you do. Don't go to any other field. The Bible says she gleaned. Is it getting heavy? Because he wants to help you, I promise. He's eating, peeling, and everything. No, I'm teasing. (laughs) The love of God. Why are you at the anchor? It's the love of God. It's the love of God. I can't help it, preacher. But when I come in here, doesn't matter how the week goes. When I get in there, I feel something here. You know how she got all that fruit? Because the reapers left it. It, was, it came from the reapers' baskets. It was handfuls, not on purpose, but handfuls of purpose. And everywhere she went, she's gathering what they left over. It represents the fruit of what God has given me. Believers will always have more than enough to give the people that need what they have. Your joy is not just for you. 
Watch it out there, Brother Chuck. It's not just for you to have joy and peace and long suffering and patience and kindness and gentleness and meekness and temperance. It's so those in your circle that you're the solitary of can reach up. Say there's something when I'm around you that makes me want to live. It makes me want to be. What is it about you that makes me want to be a better person? Because when the fruit of the Spirit, things that you would normally say, conversation you normally have makes no sense, but there's this nudge that says, don't talk about that. Because that changes the atmosphere. Well, it's just what's going on today. That what you talk about today could change the atmosphere. How many's ever done that? I have many times and failed at it because it was just something on my mind that I shouldn't have put in my spirit. And if I'd have started the day with my branch connected to the vine, what they need is what's going to come off. It's fruit. I, I, I feel this today because the greatest revival in the history of this church is not going to be because of good preaching, good decor, new property. It's going to come from fruit. Her name was changed. Not from Ruth the Moabitess. It became Ruth the wife of Boaz. Of today and tomorrow. He can change your life. We'll send people to this church that have backgrounds just like you. Sin just like you. Mistakes. Immoral. Selfish. Things. Because we've all sinned come short of the glory of God and when they come to church they're expecting judgment when they're given mercy that my friend is a fruit when I would go to jails and I'd never ask them what they did I would just say his blood is thick enough Because maybe what I wouldn't forgive, he will. Fruit. And the, the only, only thing I can do, the only thing I can do is go to a jail cell like this and say, what he's done somehow for a moment there's faith to say God give me a second chance this time you don't have to end up the direction you're going you know grab all those grapes because there's so much coming I'm telling you I prophesy to you it's just sitting at a breakfast table at your house one day. Pain was so severe. Remember that? You said, I don't even know if I can make it, but pain was so bad. And in one moment, at your breakfast table, you, he healed you. Remember that? I love you. You're my favorite people in the world. But me is fruit. So glad to see y'all. That one's mine. Can you tell? It's got a bite out of it. It's just, I asked, I asked Larry Evans. I asked him one day, I said, Brother Evans, come here, give me a hug. He had chemo in his pocket, IV in his arm. I said, Brother Evans, I said, I'd love to hug you. Oh, I went to hug you. He said, you can't? I said, I says, Steve, why can't I go ahead, buddy? Get, get something out of there. I don't know which one that is, but it's green. Amen. I said, Evans, oh man, I'm so glad to see you. You've been a while since I've been in church because of cancer and chemo. And, and I went to hug him. He said, hold that. Go ahead, buddy. I said, I said, why can I hug you? He said, because I got chemo going in my body. He said, that would tear loose and spill on you. Kenny, he said, 
Caught right. He said, if it was spilling, it, it'll eat all the way through your skin into your bone. It just burn a hole all the way through. It's so powerful. He said, look. He said, there's the spill kit unless it gets on me right there that neutralizes it. I said, it doesn't make sense. How can chemo go into your body but not on your flesh? He said, it appears that the doctor said the blood can handle what the flesh can't take. The blood can handle. I'm going to tell you right now. What I might condemn, he'll forgive. What I might not forgive, he'll let go free. But it's because of his long suffering, his patience, his meekness, his kindness. You're in this building right now and you say, but I'm a sinner. If you only knew what I did, you only knew how long I've been away from God. Preacher, you, you might not want me here. Could I tell you, I haven't come to judge you. Jesus said, neither did I come to condemn the world, but I came to save the world. Oh, for whosoever loveth the Father. I come to tell you today, there's fruit in this building. Enough faith that'll cause you to repent. And when you repent, and enough faith that'll cause you to say, I am forgiven. I'll get baptized and get my sins washed away. And he'll give me a new beginning. Everybody hold your hand out and say, there's fruit in the house. You know what mercy does? Miss Mercy withholds me from the judgment that I deserve. That's called mercy. I deserve this, but he, for, he gave me this. You know what grace does? It gives you what you don't deserve. I'm going to tell you what I feel. You are the solitary in your family. You're the solitary in your community. And God wants you to do nothing more than bear fruit. And if you'll bear fruit, you're going to reach them. They're expecting one thing when they get another. And what is it? It's the love and the grace and the mercy of God. Is there anybody here that wants that? Is there... Is, is there somebody here that says, I am a Christian and I will bear fruit? Come on, you've been in agony in your spirit. Oh, but something in you is saying, I'm going to be a better saint than I've ever been. Come on, this is a call of God for the fruit of the Spirit. Oh, my attitude hasn't been right, Pastor. My spirit hasn't been right. If I'm going to reach part of my world, I've got to have the fruit of the Spirit. Come on, there is something moving. Oh, I'm not going to live frustrated any longer. I'm going to get connected to the root. Come on, there's a, there's a call of repentance. If you're here right now and you say, I'm a sinner and I've been misery, I've given up all hope. You don't have to give up hope. That love, that, 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 that warmness you feel, that's the fruit. That's the Spirit of God. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, I want you to call out to the Lord. They were expecting you to hate them, but you gave them love. They were expecting you to retaliate, but you gave them mercy. Come on, there's a call of God. There's a call of God. You're not here because you're perfect. You're here because there's fruit. And you felt the long suffering of God. The same that waited in the days of Noah. Come on. Come and eat of the fruit that's in this church. Come on, saint of God. I'm not starting my day without the roots and the vine. I'll be the branch and I'll bear the fruit. His blood can handle, but I can't forgive. Come on. Lord is ministering to you. He's forgiven you. He's given you a second chance. It's the love of God that you feel. Hallelujah. Oh. Why don't we begin to pray all over the building? God, let me bear the fruit of the Spirit. I want to act different than I did before I came to the cross. I want to be a man or woman of integrity. I want to be a lady of grace. A man of character. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come 
all, there's a call to prayer right now. I've ever felt a call to prayer. I think there's a call of repentance even. God, forgive me for not having better temperance, for not being more gentle, for not being more kind. Forgive me for acting out of my flesh instead of acting as a branch that produces fruit. I don't want to be cut off. I want to be restored and renewed in the love and the mercy and the joy and grace of God. <laughs> Come on, your house is going to fill with a different fragrance. It's going to be a fruitful bough that hangs over the wall. Faith is coming to your mind and your prayer is going to be more powerful than it's ever been. You bear fruit. You bear fruit. Come on, all the way to the back row, God is dealing with every single person in the building right now. Bear the fruit. You don't have to act like the world you came from. You don't have to act like the childhood He saved you from. You can be a new man. You can be a new woman. But Pastor Bounds, I'm so frustrated with how I treat people. I understand we were all sinners. Pastor Bounds, what do I do? Get connected to the root system of Jesus Christ. Let Him feed you. Let Him nourish you. There's a call of God just to bear fruit. in this room right now I want you to lay hands on your neighbor would you do that watch the power of touching the branch lay your hand over in your neighbor's shoulder begin to pray with one another come on there's strength in praying with one another <laughs> 